So we're going to open this up. So when I started this, I was doing watercolor and then I started with the art journaling and I was seeing all the different lovely sprays that Tim Holtz and Donna Downey and Dinah Wakely and everybody was using. And I wasn't sure that I was going to stick to it because I was enjoying my watercolor. And so I decided that, you know, if this is, they say that this is solid ink and when it is wet, it becomes liquid ink. So I thought, okay, why can't I make my own sprays, ink sprays with this? At that time, I did not go on to YouTube and see that Derwin actually suggests this as one of the uses. They have something called a, a shake and grate or grate and shake tool that you can use. Um, so check out that video. So what I simply did is I got these at the dollar store spray bottles. You get two for a buck twenty-five. They are 2.6 ounces. Um, they have a nice spray with them. And I took my IKEA grater, grated up some, and just started experimenting. I was shocked at how little of the block you actually used, although I did, um, you know, you end up, your blocks kind of get a bite out of them. And I thought, oh, what if I use that all up? And then I thought, you know, Karen, if you use this all up, good for you, because you can buy these individually. Uh, I know I've heard people say that you can buy them individually at Dick Blick. I know our art store, you can buy them individually at local art store in Saskatchewan. So um, they are available individually. And I'm going, if that, if I use them up, that means I'm being creative. I'm, I'm doing stuff. So when they sit, you do begin to see the sediment. It settles to the bottom. And if you can see, the little hose at the end sits right in that sediment. Now, I have not necessarily seen these clog. And I've, these have been made for over eight months now. And they've, they're still um, active and I haven't seen them clog, although some spray better than others, so I'm thinking maybe there's something to it and I need to really clean them all out. Um, oops. I know um, Lindsay on the Frugal Crafter talked about the tubes when they sit right near the end. I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick this up, but you can see that it's clogged at the end. The sediment is in, in there. And Lindsay recommended, love her videos, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, if you don't have, if you haven't subscribed to her channel, please do so. All you need to do is just cut off so that it is not sitting directly into the sediment. Maybe a little bit more, so it's just trial and error and cutting it off. I did know, I have sourced these out, my dollar store hasn't been able to get any more in um, recently and I, and I need some more now that I've started making acrylic sprays as well, um, but I have seen them on Amazon, they come in a, in a group of 10. I like, you know, you can use your own sprayers, you know, from hair products um, and whatnot, but, you know, <laughs> eyeglasses. I just like having everything look the same. So I'm just going to show you how quick and easy this is to make a spray. I'm just going to get a piece of paper here and fold it. And I'm not going to use this one. I have upgraded myself to one from the dollar store. I don't know if that's an upgrade or, or not. And I'm just going to wipe the other color off of here. This has a much finer grate to it and I find it doesn't chew up my blocks as, as much. So I'm going to pick color 1200, which on my chart is sea blue. 
and I'm just going to grate. Just a bit of warning, do not use anything that you use with your art supplies, any kitchen appliances, don't go back and use them in the kitchen. I don't know about the safety um, of these products, so err on the side of safety. Oh, we, yeah, we have it, it was a little damp yet, so. As I said, Derwent, you can buy their Great and Shake, and then you actually have a little bottle so that it goes directly into the, the grater fits on top of this thing. For me, this works. Like I said, I made these seven months ago, and there's a couple of them that need to be refilled. So you do not need a whole lot, nor do I fill this right to, to the top with water. I, I like the luxury of being able to um, make other sprays. The cool thing is there are 72 colors in this set and I can make any color combination because I can mix any colors and come up with my own custom colors that that do that. So this is number 1200 and I'm just going to write that on here and the name of it is Sea Blue I'm just going to put that onto my bottle just to keep track. Then I'm going to just funnel this in here. Now, the thing to be warned about ink tents is since it is permanent when it is dry, um, it doesn't come out of clothing. So if you get stuff in clothing, you, it's there. So I'm going to add water now. Um, funny story, I used alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I put in some of them one time by accident. So label your containers. And I'm just going to put that in and swish it around. This is just tap water. If you have concerns about your water supply, um, use bottled water. Just gonna, it looks a little bit light. Oh, actually that's quite nice. Wrong. So you can see, very little. I can add more water if I, if I want this finer. I can add different colors and, and do it that way. Now, with the water color, or with the, with the ink tent sprays now, I have used them with, with my stencils, and I've found sometimes it works better, sometimes it works um, not as good, depending on what it's on. This is on watercolor card paper, so it gets a very different effect. This is on just regular, it's a little bit heavier, but writing paper. The thicker the paper, the better it, it is. This I've put on book paper, same kind of paper, book paper. Um, I love how when you can use multiple sprays, you get the mixing. Um, sometimes the stencil, if the stencil's thin, it you don't get the exact print that you want. This is on watercolor paper, again, with a very heavier, a heavy stencil, so that you get more exact. Now they say that once it's act activated with water, that it is, it becomes permanent and. Um, I have not found that to be true with the sprays. I find I have better success making it permanent if um, if I use heat set it after it's after it's supplied. So you can try that. You might have to use a fixative or just make sure you go very very softly over with the gel medium and other other things. It hasn't really been too big of a problem, but um, it's something to be aware of. Most times I do, I spray the thing on different kind of papers and then I use that to collage and put onto my art journal projects. Um, so I'm going to do a couple right here with the spray that we made just to show you. And 
I'm going to I'll just flip that over. Use this one, and we have our sea blue. And I find if the, if you stay a little bit further away. Now this stencil I love this swirl background. It's very light and flimsy. So if you kind of go directly above, it works a little bit better. And And we'll do a little bit. Tim Holtz recommends, you know, on all the sprays, and I think it's a good idea because I like that fine mist and I want to keep it keep it going. So then we can take that off and you can apply it to the other side. I use the same paper to rub off my stamps and clean them off and then this will be used in in my journaling as well and I find that the paper towel it has some you get some patterns on there and the colors and it the texture on art journaling pages is great so there you have kind of the positive and negative And sometimes I really like the negative better. <laughs> so um, play with it and see. Wiping it off, I do have a tub of water and I will throw this in there. Um, but you can just rub it off. I would recommend that because it may become, you may end up with some of the blue or the, whatever color you used. So I'm just gonna show you the difference with using watercolor paper. Um, in there and let me use this this stencil in here and again I'm going to use the blue and you can do the background these are pre-made cards that I got from Curry's which is a store in Canada an online store that has a lot of art stuff Not following my own recommendations and wiping off the thing. So there you have it. I mean, and it just, it's a very different effect. It's not precise. It's not even, um, so it may not be for you, but. And then put it on the book paper. And I find that just adds that little bit of texture more you know, but more bang for your buck. I mean, you've already committed yourself to, to this process. Now, one of the things that I thought of, and since there's a little bit more time on this video, I have never tried to apply it direct to a gesso page. So this is an old t telephone address book before um, iPhones and all that was in, in form. So I'm just going to see if what kind of effect I get using, using it on here. So I'm going to grab one of my stencils. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab a blue one because I want to cover the whole page. So I'm going to put it like that. I don't know what's going to happen here. If it's going to just stay on the surface, um, if I have to dry it, or what's going to happen. So, I mean, nothing like experimenting live. That one seems to be a little bit clogged, so like better sprayers work. I just love being able to play, you know, and come up with custom colors. Of course, I never know what colors are actually. Oh, problem. So now I'm just simply going to get my book paper ready here. I'm not going to waste any of it. I'm going to lift it off, put it here, and let me just try to heat dry this. I smudged it here when I was lifting it off, but I just want to see if it um, what it does. 
something I've never used it with. Um, and I avoided doing that because of things like this happening. I've since learned that with art journaling you don't want the perfection. I think, you know, with the gesso it would sit on top, but it seems to be quite, quite nice. Oop. You know. Sorry about the head there. <laughs> so you can spray right onto the gessoed surface and, you know, see if it is, oh, let's get this perfectly clean. I want to be true to to this. And it's still, it, it does activate. So, you know, be warned, use a fixative, or be careful if, if it matters to you. I've also sprayed, done some of the sprays on tissue paper. And since I've had to re do this, there we go. I had some wet there, so that's what it's all about, right? Now, with the tissue paper, I'm expecting it to bleed a lot more in there. Just going to put this, it's already wet, and we're just going to have some fun and put something on here, which you can use this tissue paper Okay, moved. Now it's very, very, very wet. I'm throwing that in the water before I would move this because it's tissue paper. Uh, you're going to get a very, very faint thing, which I absolutely love using the tissue paper um, in my collaging for the art journaling. So, very faint. And I can go back on this if I want with a different stencil, different colors. It's just simply not going to work for me today. Why is it that as soon as you go live, or go on to video, so you can get build up different layers. So sometimes I'll just have the tissue paper sitting on the other table, and when I'm spraying it, I'll flop it over onto um, the tissue paper to get to get the negative and the color, and it just adds excitement to your journal pages later. So I'll take this and and some of my book papers and anything that I've done. Sometimes I'll just set up and have a, have a day that I do that. And then I chop them in half and I keep them in my box so that when I need a background for something or I want some collage paper for journaling with fives or something else, that's what this is. It's all stuff using a lot of intense blocks and stuff. So I have that at the go when I want to create my pages. So I think I'm going to close this video. Um, the next video I'm going to do stamping with the intense blocks. So I've used...